let's challenge it a bit. So what happens if I'm actually going to scale this into 15 <laughs> deployments, into 50 pods? So as you can see, my K9S is going absolutely crazy and it's trying to, to scale up all of that. Um, and let's switch over to Chrome and check that. Wow, it's already running. I can't believe this. So it's scheduled the C6i 12 extra large instance. This is crazy. Hello and welcome to this video about Carpenter and EKS autoscaling with spot instances. My name is Shimon Toltz and in this video we're going to go over how to set up a Carpenter service, how to configure the provisioners, then we're going to actually go and set up an application and scale it to like 50 pods and see actually how Carpenter deals with it with scaling up and scaling down. Let's get started. So when running on Kubernetes, we have the internal uh, horizontal pod the scalers that allow us to increase and decrease the amount of pods that we have running in our Kubernetes. But we need to take care of the nodes. So whether you're using Fargate, which just auto scales it for you, or you can use managed node groups or cluster auto scaling and uh, Carpenter. So obviously this video is about Carpenter. So let's talk about the benefits of Carpenter over cluster auto scaler. So number one, it is a smart auto scaler that knows how to uh, work and it is actually leveraging the EC2 spot fleet API and it is not using managed node groups. And why is this good? So this is much faster, much granular, and it allows for better control. So the scaling is blazing fast, and you will see this in this video where I scale like 50 pods and it happens instantly. Um, and secondly, is that it is a very, very highly optimized and smart um, orchestrator. So we will never have a point where we have a node that only has one small pod that uses 10% of it. It will always rebalance and reshard and re-optimize the nodes. So what is Carpenter? It's an open source project developed initially by, by AWS, but it is now also part of the community. It has more than 4,000 stars. Um, and in order to get started, you have the carpenter.sh website. Uh, you see the architecture here that explains how it works. And this is uh, how you can get started. We need an EKS cluster, obviously. So I've created one using EKS Cuttle. And as you can see, it is running version 1.27. And what I've done is I've created a node group. And this node group is going to hold our Carpenter uh, scheduler. So if we uh, look at uh, our system, we can see that we have a K9S uh, connected to, this, to the cluster and I've also installed some Grafana and Prometheus for monitoring because that's always good. Let's install Carpenter. So in order to do so, I'm following the docs. So first of all, you need to log out from a public ECR, I don't know, whatever, I'll respect that. And it's just gonna be a simple Helm upgrade command. Now. What is going to happen is it's a Helm install. Now notice that there is a difference because Carpenter is actually going to be installed on a managed node group. So as you can see, it is now spinning up. And if we look at our cluster, we will see that there is one managed node group, Shimon Carpenter's demo that has two nodes because we don't want Carpenter to auto scale itself on itself, right? So it has to actually run on something and you can control that using uh, the Carpenter node group. So um, it is now running um, and we can actually see the logs and it is now hooked up. Uh, it started with some errors at the beginning, but uh, it is ready to go. So now that we have Carpenter installed, we actually need to configure it. So guess what? There is no dashboard and you don't log in anywhere. So Carpenter is a native utility that leverages Kubernetes CRDs in order to configure itself. 
So there are two main kinds that we're going to talk about in order to configure our cluster. The first one is the kind provisioner. And this is actually the, the, the part that configures our uh, carpenter settings. So this is a simple example that says that I'm going to use the capacity type spot and on demand, but it is going to prioritize spot. But if there are no spots available, it's going to fall back to on demand. And I also specified the architecture here. I told it to use AMD 64. You can give it a limit and to tell it to uh, whether the considerations are enabled. Now, there are much more advanced configurations. Uh, if we look at the uh, documentation, um, I think that the interesting part here that it is a very modular system. So you can actually say uh, what instance category do I want to use? C, M, R, uh, what's what CPUs, what hypervisor, instance generation, which availability zones, architectures, capacity type, and really there are many, many configuration options and the sky's the limit, but I'm just gonna stick to the basic ones and keep it simple. Um, and the second thing is the AWS node template. Again, I'm gonna use just the simple AWS node template in order to get started. So let's go and configure our carpenter. So I'm going to uh, go and just configure my CRDs and they are applied. So I have ca carpenter configured. So in order to perform our tests, we actually need a very simple application, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, Kubernetes pause, which is like used for networking checks or something. It's just a simple application. Deployment inflate, I'm gonna start it with two replicas um, and let's see what happens. So I'm um, just gonna cube cut, uh, I'm just gonna cube cut and apply. Um, and I'm gonna install this on my cluster. And as you can see, we already see that it is started spinning up on my cluster. And now let's change the scaling. So if I'm going to scale to five replicas, uh, we scaled it, as we can see in K9S, it immediately started invoking additional ones. And now let's see where does it start to schedule them. In the meantime, what we can do is we can actually uh, look at the controllers of Carpenter in order to see what he's saying. So you see it's starting in, in Framus, uh, attempting to acquire a leader lease. Um, and now it is actually, let's move over to Chrome and see that, um, let's look at our list of uh, nodes and hopefully it will start provisioning the nodes. Here we can see that in K9S, a container creating and it scheduled our nodes. So now if we head over to our dashboard, we can see here I'm using the carpenter provisioner and name here and this is the node and this is the node that is pinned up for us and um, and this is really really cool now we can't actually see this in the nodes here because um, it is not part of node groups and it is not part of target profile so we will not be able to see it in nodes but we can see that it is scheduled here and um, so it is running this time it's scheduled an m5 extra large and check this out it's a spot instance and this is so cool but now what I want to do is let's challenge it a bit. So what happens if I'm actually going to scale this into 50 <laughs> deployments, into 50 pods? So as you can see, my K9S is going absolutely crazy and it's trying to, to scale up all of that. Um, and let's switch over to Chrome. And check that, wow, it's already running. I can't believe this. So it's scheduled the C6i 12 extra large instance. This is crazy. I've never actually run one instance that is like 12 XL. So let's look at this. Um, and yes, it is also a spot instance. So if we go over and check this out, my pods are actually gonna start to get scheduled. It took only 40 seconds. 40 seconds including the spot launching. And this is very, very fast. So my containers are starting to come up now. And what happened is we set up uh, the containers. It uh, calculated what is the best instance type to actually run. 
and it spin up the instance that is spot instance and it is optimized for bean packing and it put all of my containers on that instance. So let's go back to that. Um, and now we can see that we have the C6i 12 extra large. So now let's do the opposite. Let's scale back down to five replicas. <laughs> it's auto scaling back down. I just love seeing that using K9S. It's so awesome. It's crazy. Um, so as we can see, it is now shutting down the C6i 12XL instance. And it is actually continuing to run my pods uh, on this M5 extra large. So this really demonstrates the strength of Carpenter and how it immediately responds to scaling events and reflects that to my infrastructure in EC2.